Have you ever felt like your career or your life is stuck? You're not progressing as quickly as you think it should? Forward momentum just doesn't happen on its own. You have to make it happen. And to do that, you need to invest in yourself. And that is exactly what Brooks and I will be talking about today in this episode of The Productivity Show, a podcast where we believe that knowledge workers like you can get everything done without having to sacrifice your health, family, and things that matter to you. If it's your first time listening, welcome. Thanks for listening and tuning in. Just a quick background on the two of us. My name is Tam Pham. I'm the founder and CEO of Asian Efficiency, where we help people become more productive at work and life through our online courses and programs. And I'm joined by my co-host of The Productivity Show, Brooks Duncan, who is the COO of Asian Efficiency. And we both came to productivity from completely different directions. I started it back in 2011 as a passion project to share what I was learning about productivity, time management, and goal setting. And it accidentally turned into a business where we are now one of the top productivity companies in the world. And I believe, Brooks, you came from a corporate background, isn't that? Yeah, absolutely. I've worked in large corporate. I've worked in small software startups. I worked in government, which I kind of sometimes wish I stayed in because then I have a nice big pension, but I've kind of done it all. And I got into the productivity world through learning how to go paperless. And then I was trying to figure out this software called OmniFocus. Not sure if you've heard of it, Tan. And that's how I got involved with Asian Efficiency and really happy happy to be here on the podcast today. We started the podcast really because we wanted to help people become more productive at work and in life. We think both are important and that happy people are productive people. And so what we do is every week we share tips, we share strategies, and we really want to help you win back time, have more energy, and get focused on what matters. It's that T framework, time, energy, and attention. And we have guests sometimes. Sometimes it's just you and I, Tan. And we really like getting reviews and feedback from listeners. We were just talking about this one in the meeting. So I just want to let you know, if you give us feedback, we discuss it in our team meeting. So we were just talking about this this morning. It's a feedback by Grantas, and he writes, I discovered the show a couple of years back, and I've listened to it regularly regularly since. Tan and Brooks are super helpful and friendly hosts. Thank you. <laughs> With a casual conversation style, all their tips have been applicable and their tool recommendations are fun to hear about without feeling like you have to have them in your arsenal. And he goes on to compliment our webinars and our courses. And I really wanted to pick this one out because, and first of all, thank you, Grant Last, for sh sharing it. But I really like that last point because when we share tools, when we're talking about software or methodologies, we are never saying that you need Need them to be productive. This is just what we've seen work for others and what helps us. If something else works for you, that is awesome. Productivity is such a big tent and we all have to do what works for us. So if you want to get in touch, if you want us to talk about you in our team meetings, <laughs> you can leave us a review in Apple Podcasts or Spotify or just email us podcast at asianefficiency.com. All right, Tan, we teased it at the beginning, but what are we going to be talking about today in the episode? Yeah, so the main idea for today's topic is all about how to invest in yourself. And here are three things you're going to get out of this episode. The first one is we're going to share three ways you can invest in yourself to advance your career and your life. We're also going to be talking about the best strategy for learning a new skill very quickly. And then also how to build a network of highly valuable people around you. And as always, we like to kick things off with our top three favorite resources so we can give you some quick wins right out the gate. And the first one is a book called The Personal MBA. I read this book many years ago and I find it one of the most valuable books you can have when it comes to business because it kind of encompasses every facet of business in a really simple book that is easily digestible and something that I refer back to every now and then. And so I highly recommend you check out the book, The Personal MBA by Josh Kaufman, who is a personal friend of mine as well. And then the second thing is, this is very underrated, but your library card. I know most of you live in a city where you have access to your library, and some of them even give you access to online courses and resources like LinkedIn Learning. So if you're not part of your local library yet, consider joining and see what resources they have available for free. Learning to invest in yourself doesn't have to cost any money. Just getting access to your local library can be so valuable in itself. And then the third one, this is actually brand new at Asian Efficiency. We just launched 25X Productivity Coaching. 
And if you're interested in learning how you can work with us one-on-one -on -one to speed up your learning, speed up your productivity, your efficiency, if you want to be more time efficient, you are in the right place. We only work with a few people a year. So if you want to work one-on-one -on -one with us and get some executive coaching to grow your business, to grow your career, advance in your life, learn the essential skills that you need to master productivity, go to 25xcoaching.com. So that is 25x coaching.com fill out the application form and we're gonna make sure we will get in touch with you to set up a follow-up call so that we can learn more about you and how we can best help and serve you and we can find and you can find links to everything that we share in the show notes by going to the productivity show.com or just swiping in your podcast app and also by the way did you know that you can also find us on YouTube Yes, Brooks and I are now on YouTube. If you go to theproductivityshow.com slash clips or go to theproductivityshow.com slash YouTube, you'll find us there. Or if you're just, you know, on your phone right now or in your tablet or in the car, just open up the YouTube app, search for Asian Efficiency or The Productivity Show, and you'll find us there as well. And as always, like and subscribe to our stuff because that helps the algorithm and it helps us make sure that we get more exposure and help more people because that's what we're all about. So... Brooks, we're going to be talking about three ways to invest in your... I want you to lead the first one. What is the first thing that people can do when it comes to investing in yourself? Yeah, this concept of investing in yourself is kind of timely for me because my wife and I have been talking so much lately about investing financially. So it's investing for retirement and stuff like that. So that's been so top of mind. But that is one way to invest, the financial investing. But really today, we want to talk about investing in yourself. And the first way I want to share to do that is through skill development and learning. And I want to clarify that we're always learning things, right? But this is like really intentional, really directed skill development and learning. It's actually part of our core values at Asian Efficiency. We talk about it in our weekly meeting every week. And it's one of our core values we call Glow Green, where we go around the team and we talk about what books we've been reading, what courses we've been taking, what audiobooks we've been listening to, and just share resources and share learnings from that. And the idea really is that the more you can develop your own skills, really the more productive you're gonna be. It's gonna have this knock-on effect for all sorts of areas of your work and your life. And it sounds kind of funny, right? Picking up a new skill to help you at work can actually help you in your personal life as well because it allows you to be more productive productive and can, at least theoretically, free up more of your time, energy, and attention. And if you are, say, applying for a job or if you're looking for a career progression, anybody with more skills is going to be more valuable than someone with fewer skills, right? All other things being equal, if people are evaluating between two different things, that is what's going to help you. And I've had many different experiences with, with this. An example that pops in my mind is I went to a conference once and it was a conference about digital marketing. And it was just when I was first starting to learn about that stuff, online marketing and advertisements and stuff like that. And I didn't really know that much about it. And I was kind of trying to learn a little bit by myself, just picking, reading blogs and stuff like that. But I went to this conference and it was really focused and directed sessions. And as I was sitting there, it was like there was <laughs> fireworks going on in my mind. Like I was learning all of these things. And right after attending those sessions, I came back and my progress was just accelerated. I was able to do so many more things. And the ROI on attending that conference was off the charts. And so that's what we want to encourage you to do is to direct your investment in yourself as far as building skills and getting training. And I said before, the directed thing is really important because as your career progresses, it's actually really easy not to do this. As your career goes, you're, you know, you go along in your job. It's very easy to just go with the flow and you know, you, you do learn things. It's not that you're not learning things as you go, but you just kind of learn enough to get your job done. You kind of take different situations as they come. And sometimes you can even get promotions through lengths of service or maybe a, a internal opportunity opens up and it's just easier to hire internally. So, you know, it's not that 
you're going to be stuck if you don't do this. But what can happen is the world can just pass you by if you don't do this intentional learning. It's kind of like, say, if you're an accountant or a bookkeeper, and maybe you're like so good at the desktop version of QuickBooks, like no one knows it better than you, but you totally miss how the industry shifts to web-based accounting. Or maybe you are a software developer and you become so good at the language, you consider yourself a developer of that language, but you don't really pay attention to new languages, new technologies that come out. This is all fine until you need to get a new job or until you get passed over for promotions by somebody with more current skills. So I would really encourage you to do some focus skill building as you're investing in yourself. How about you, Tan? Has, what's your thoughts on skill building, investing in yourself? What do you think about that? So when I think about building skills, I think about you can go wide or you can go deep. And every year I th like to think about, am I going wide this year? Meaning, am I going to learn additional skills? Or am I going deeper? Meaning there's an existing skill that I have, but I want to become better at it and become more fine tuned and refine my skill and become maybe in like the top 10% of people who have this particular skill. So when it comes to skill development, I always like to think, do you want to go wide or do you want to go deep? And I have different theories about skill development. And one of the things that I truly believe in is that when you have two different skills, you're in the top 10% of both of those skills. When you can combine the two, you're almost like a unicorn. So to give you an example, one of the things that has happened is over the last few years, you've seen a lot of fitness influencers on YouTube now that have a huge following and they have you know crazy incomes and, and influence on people. And when you think about it, there's been bodybuilders for many decades already, right? And if you're a bodybuilder and you're like in amazing shape, you're already in the top 10% of people because of your skill of what you've accomplished with your body. Now, if you add an additional skill on top of that, meaning let's say you learn something like video editing, right? And being good on camera, guess what? That 10% of people of who are amazing bodybuilders, if they also learn, or a smaller set of people learn also a skill like video editing or being funny on video, then you are also now combining the two, a unicorn in the sense that you are now a bodybuilder who's good on camera and now has the opportunity to reach a lot more people because you're able to combine two skills where you're very good. And so when I think about that, you can start thinking about, okay, what's one skill you have right now? And if you combine it with another skill, it creates so much leverage and uniqueness that nobody else can compete with you. So to give you an example, in my personal life, I'm somebody who studied productivity intensely. I've studied productivity to the nth degree where I consider myself an expert in this area because I've studied all the methodologies, I've read all the books, I spent hundreds if not thousands of hours reading, studying, and experimenting. Right now, if I never learned the skill of writing, then nobody would ever really know about me because I would just be an extremely productive person, but nobody would ever know that I was this productive. However, because I also learned the skill of writing and I'm not even one of the best writers in the world, I would say I'm probably in the maybe top 20% of people when it comes to writing, but because I had a skill productivity plus an additional skill of writing, and I combined the two, that's how Asian efficiency essentially got started. And now I'm like one of the few people who can talk about productivity in writing, and there aren't that many people who, who can do both, right? And if you add an additional skill on top of that, for example, public speaking, or you're really good at podcasting, or you're really good on video, now you have this uniqueness that I think is very underrated. So if you can be in the top 10% of skills and two different skills and combine them, you're like so unique. And so that's something that I would encourage you to think about is when you go wide, like what is something that you can learn and go deeper on in there and then combine it with something you already have going on, right? So that's one thing. I think another way to look at skill building, which I think is also underrated, is being a generalist. Generalists are so valuable and very underrated. If I think about most of the people at Asian Efficiency, most people are generalists. Everybody can do almost everything. And one of the beneficial things of that is if someone is on vacation, if someone is on sick leave, if someone is away for a few hours or a few days, someone else can come in and step up 
and take over the work. And so work is never stalled. It's always progressing and moving forward. And so being a generalist is actually very valuable. And that means that you have a wide range of skills. So as you are learning different skills, even if they don't seem quite related right now, you'll see that over time, they become much more valuable when you start to combine them with different things. And so when you shared your story, Brooks, of how you learn about digital marketing, even though you're an operations guy, but because you understand digital marketing, when we talk about marketing and marketing campaigns and backend processes and systems that we have to build, when we have a conversation about marketing, you actually understand what I'm saying and what I'm trying to envision and what we're trying to create. And then you know how to run the systems and operate those systems because you have the understanding of what digital marketing is, right? And if you didn't have that, it would be like pulling teeth almost. And I would have to like, you know, screen flow a lot of things and say, this is what I want to do. This is what a landing page is. This is what an add-on is. This is what an upsell flow is. And, you know, it would just take so much more time to get stuff done versus me talking to a person who understands digital marketing, but also backend system and operating systems as well. And so little did you know how, how <laughs> valuable that became. And when you started learning that, you didn't think you would be able to combine the two, but because you did, you're so valuable in that sense that nobody else can almost compete with you on that because you have two amazing sets of skills. And if you add productivity on top of that, it's like, who is Brooks Duncan who knows productivity, does operations and understands digital marketing? There's very few people like you who can do that. And that makes you extremely valuable. I think one group of organizations that do this very well are professional organizations like lawyers, like accountants, stuff like that. They have it so that in order to keep your credentials, you know, it's hard to get the credentials, but then you have to keep it. And to do that, you have to do like a certain amount of professional development each year. And as somebody who holds the designation or the credentials, it can be annoying, right? Because, you know, it's coming to the end of the year and you're scrambling to get your hours. So from that point, it can be kind of annoying. But big picture, I think it's a good idea because it kind of forces people to stay current. And I think a lot of us can learn from those organizations, even if we aren't part of a... If, even if we aren't a lawyer, an accountant, or part of one of these professional organizations, you can kind of create your own professional development plan, right? You can have something like our Glow Green core value, where you can have a goal for doing training and development for yourself or for your team, come up with a goal and track it maybe monthly or quarterly or whatever that you're trying to hit. You can also take online courses. Obviously, we're a little biased here, but you know, you can go to Coursera, LinkedIn Learning, like we talked about with their library card, doesn't even have to cost anything, or maybe there's sites related to whatever your area of expertise is. There's also meetup groups, depending on where you live. There's a lot of times groups for almost anything you want to learn or any skills you want to build. There's other people around you. If you're in a largest city, there's other people around you kind of trying to learn the same thing. And there's ton on YouTube, of course. The other thing you can do, of course, is get one of those professional certifications. But one thing I'll say about that is only do it if you think it will actually help you. So the flip side of that digital marketing story I told you is when I worked in corporate treasury software, for some reason, I decided it would be a good idea to get what's called the Certified Treasury Professional Designation. And it was a ton of work. I had a young young baby at the time, and so I spent a lot of time away studying and stuff like that. If I'm honest with myself, I was really only doing it because a bunch of my coworkers were doing it. <laughs> but if I was honest with myself, I wasn't planning to be a treasurer for the rest of my life. So that is skill building that didn't really have much of an ROI. So if you're going to do something, make it something that is actually going to help you or you're really interested in. Don't just build skills for the sake of building them. All right. So that wraps up the first section here on developing and investing in your skills. So let's talk about the second portion here, and that is to build a strong network. So back in 2017 or 2016, I read a book called 30 Lessons for Living. And the basic premise of the book is that the author interviewed people who were about to die, and he asked them, what's one life lesson you would like to pass on to the next generation? And he compiled it in 30 different lessons. And one of the main takeaways I had from the book is that 
our happiness comes from our relationships with people, whether it's your your brother, your sister, your parents, your significant other, the people in your community, the people that you work with. A big part of our happiness comes from the connections that we have around us. And when I read that book, I realized, wow, I have a lot of shallow relationships. Like I might see Brooks Duncan walking down the street and go, oh, I know who Brooks is. He does this for work. But I actually don't know his story. I don't know what he's passionate about. I don't know what he's really into. I just know his name and what he does for work. And that was a very shallow relationship. So I realized, okay, if I want to be selfishly happier, more fulfilled, live longer, I need to cultivate those relationships. So I started hosting a lot of dinner parties and events to bring people together so I could get to know them and spend more quality time with them. And when I started this, I did this for very selfish reasons, just because I wanted to be happier, more fulfilled. But little did I know how it started off being just for my own good to now being able to be of service for other people. So having done like 45 dinner parties now, having done multiple events now, having done a lot of happy hours where I was the organizer and kind of put it all together and then invited people, all these different opportunities were coming my way that I would never ever thought of. So for example, I've been recruited many times to come work for other companies where I'm like, hey, uh, uh, I would love to, but you know, I run my current business right now and I'm quite happy with what I'm doing, but I appreciate the offer, right? I've also been recruited to get into investment deals that would otherwise not be available to the public because it was just so early on that it wasn't even accessible unless you knew the right people, right? I've also been able to meet some significant people around Austin, Texas, where I live. For example, I met Michael Dell recently, the founder of Dell Computers, who is a billionaire who lives maybe 20 minutes from me. And I met him at the golf course. I've also met Gary Vaynerchuk or Gary V, who was like an internet hero. And I spent a whole day with him showing him around town because someone told him that, that we should meet and that I could show him a good time around Austin. And I also met the CEO of Whole Foods. And I've met all these like amazing people that I would otherwise never meet because I invested the last few years in the people around me in my network. And that's something I want you to encourage as well because networking can get you a job that a degree or diploma cannot because i've been offered so many opportunities to to work at different companies and do different things even though i don't have a degree whatsoever if, if you don't know my story i actually dropped out of high school and talked my way in to get into college only to drop out two and a half years later so even to this day i have no degree but because i was so connected to different people I got all these opportunities that you know a, a degree would never be able to get you into. And if you think about most people, how they get their job, especially if it's, if it's a job that they really like, it's not oftentimes that they are going to the interview and then get the job. It's oftentimes they know somebody who already works there, they vouch for them, and that's how they got the interview and then got into the company. And so I want you to think about how can you start spending more time and energy and maybe a little bit of money depending on your situation investing in your network and it could be your personal network it could be your professional network or it could be a combination of both right and there's a lot of different ways you can do this so one of the ways you can do this and this is very relatively simple is if you have a linkedin profile just post on linkedin once a week with stuff that you've learned stuff that you've discovered or just sharing stuff that you find interesting and that other people might find, find interesting and that's just one way spending time in your network as well, right? And where you're just sharing value. It could also be hosting events. This is something that I like to do. You could host maybe a brunch every month or so, or host a dinner every month where you're inviting people. That's one way to invest in your network as well. You can go to all the different groups, the associations, the conferences, the meetups. There's just all these things you can do. And what they all have in common is oftentimes it requires time. Anybody that has a big network is somebody who has spent a lot of time building this, cultivating this, spending quality of time with people because based on my experience, you cannot have a big network unless you spend a lot of time cultivating those and spending time with other people. Like you can build a huge social media profile, right? But it's not quite the same because it's a one-dimensional relationship. Like people know you, but you don't know the people that follow you. 
having a great network involves you having a bilateral relationship where you know the person, the other person knows you, you both have this trust with each other, and that is cultivated over time. So the sooner you can start, the more compounding the relationship becomes over time. And so there's just so many benefits that come with this that I could talk about forever, but I wanted to uh, check in with you here, Brooks. How have you cultivated relationships and in, in your network over the years? Yeah, well, I like what you said about how investing in yourself and building a network really is mostly time. Like sometimes it's financial, but remember investment does not have to mean money investment. This is one of those cases where it's mainly a time investment. And I think, a lot of times when we think of building a network, we think of it as building it externally, right? That's a lot of what you've been talking about, holding dinner parties and stuff like that. But I've actually had a lot of success, and my wife as well, building networks internally in work as well. Now, this obviously depends on the size of your company that you work at. There's no building a network at AE, right? I just hit tan up at Slack. <laughs> the other members, you know, we just chat in Slack. So that's a little different because we're a smaller company. But if you live, e but if you work even in a company of say a hundred people, there are networks that you can form that can help the other people help yourself and just make work better. So a lot of what it comes to is just talking to people, even people that you might not normally need to interact with. Like for myself, when I worked in software, even though I was kind of in management, et cetera, et cetera, I would still chat with a, a newer QA person or some quality assurance person that joined the company or whatever. And we'd have these like socials and stuff like that. And I'd always make sure to chat with different people, even if I don't have a direct working need to converse with them. And what that did over time, and I didn't do that for some strategic reason. I just did it because I wanted to make people feel welcome. But what happens is all of a sudden you have these, like you said, you have these doors open to you. You need, you're in, so I'm going to use the software example because that was my example, but you know, you need to get a patch deployed before the weekend. Well, you can start hitting people up who are maybe outside of the normal channels and just find out what the deal is. Or you just, you just have all these opportunities for making your job better, making their job better and making your work life better. And so some ways to do that other than just talking to people are joining events and committees, anywhere you can really meet people. A lot of times, especially if you've been at a company for a while, you might start to feel jaded and you not, might not want to participate in things, but just joining things can be really helpful. Also going to industry events, conferences, professional associations. I know the company I worked with one time we had a client conference. Well, we had lots of client conferences, but one time it was, I was in Vegas and I ended up at a craps table with a bunch of people from the company that was acquiring us. And all of a sudden I was like BFFs with <laughs> all these big wigs. <laughs> Cause you know, we we're rolling dice and stuff like that. And these are the sorts of weird things that can happen that help you build networks at work just by participating whenever possible. So these are the sorts of things that you can do. And it's funny, I dropped a I dropped a, a bombshell on the podcast a couple episodes ago, letting Tan know that my wife had been laid off and you know she's still laid off. But what happened since then is all these people who she knew through her previous jobs, as soon as they heard that she was available, all of a sudden, you know, she thought she'd have all this time off just to rest and stuff like that. But all of a sudden people are hitting her up right away saying, Hey, you know, you should come talk to our CEO. You should come talk to this, t talk to that. And, be and it's because she had built those networks within her company that all of a sudden, like you said, jobs and opportunities just come to you through building your network that Otherwise you wouldn't have to do. So she actually is talking to a company right now and she's, she's already like worked everything out with a CEO and hasn't even talked to the hiring managers yet because that's just the way the network worked. And these are the sorts of things that can happen. So I've, a quote I've always really liked is by somebody named Tim Grawl, who has a business helping authors market their books. And one thing I really like, and I've always kind of taken it to heart is to be relentlessly helpful. So whatever you can do to help other people can really help you build your network. So 
if you have it in the back of your mind, be relentlessly helpful, looking for opportunities to help other people, even when there's no benefit to you, direct benefit to you anyway, it's going to pay off in the future. A great book to supplement all of this is a book called Never Eat Alone by Keith Ferrazzi. And that's the most commonly referenced book when it comes to building a network or befriending people and trying to make sure that your network is just expanding over time. And I really like the example that you shared of your wife because she kind of did the combination of takeaway number one, which is building skills and investing yourself there, but also a combination of number two here, which is building your network. And if you become a person that is valuable, it is skilled, you are someone who is valuable to the company, but for whatever reason you get laid off, and because you have a network of people, now you are more valuable to other people now. And people always recognize other highly skilled, valuable people. So that's why it's so important for you as you're listening to this podcast to think about all the ways you can invest in yourself and whether it's skill developments, building your network, like these are two things that are so valuable that if you spend an hour per week focusing on those two things, like 30 minutes building a skill or developing a skill, 30 minutes of networking, building your, your people around you, that in itself over time will compound, especially as you just continue about your life. And it's one of those things that the sooner you start, the more valuable it becomes over time. So as you're listening to this, you know, before we even wrap up the episode, I would already encourage you to think about, hey, what are some things you can do right now to do all this? And so to move on to the next point here, which is number three, if you want to accelerate your success even more so, I think this is the best strategy when it comes to learning new skills or investing in yourself, and that is to get coaching. Now, when it comes to productivity, here's the dirty little secret that most of the time we kind of know, but we haven't really talked about or even publicly shared here on the podcast, but most of you know deep down inside what you have to do, but you just somehow don't do it. And a lot of productivity challenges that we have comes to that idea that, okay, I kind of know what I need to do, but for whatever reason, it's lack of time, lack of energy, lack of focus, right? The T framework, which is something we always talk about. We just don't follow through on that. And so one way to address this is by getting some form of coaching. So for me, I always used to struggle with working out. I don't particularly enjoy working out. My philosophy when it comes to working out is doing the bare minimum. So one, I can eat more food or make sure I don't gain weight and do it to be healthy enough to, to live a long life. Like that's, <laughs> that's my approach to exercise and that's my exercise philosophy. I just do it and I do the bare minimum, like two or three uh, strength training a week and that's good enough, right? That's like the MVP or the minimal viable product you need to live a good life, healthy life while still being able to enjoy the food. And that's kind of like my approach. And if I were left to my own devices where I just have to work out on my own, chances are I don't really work out because I don't particularly enjoy it. I've tried different types of exercise and I realized, you know, the best way I can get exercise in is if I'm being held accountable and I have a coach who can hold me accountable and also coach me to do what needs to be done. So that's one of the reasons I work with a personal trainer because one, all I have to do is just show up. I don't have to think about which exercises I'm gonna do today, what music we're playing today, what routine I'm doing. All I gotta do is just wear my gym clothes, go to the gym and just show up and do the work, right? And he's gonna tell me what I need to do. Same thing with other coaches I've worked with in the past. I used to work with a copywriter, her name is Katie, and this is back around 2012, 2013 or so when we first started Asian Efficiency. And she would help me improve the newsletters I would write for AE. And so every time we had a newsletter, before I would send it off to everybody, I would send it to Katie. She would give me them feedback and say, Tan, like, I really like the story, but this is a better way of writing your story. Or, hey, have you considered sharing this detail? Or actually, you can eliminate these filler words because they don't add anything to your writing. And but because I was working with a coach, yes, I could have read a book about better storytelling. I could have read a book about better writing. Right? Everyone always talks about the book on writing. I've never read it. But because I was working with a coach, I could get that immediate feedback and learning through those feedback loops and iterations, which is one of our core values here at Age of Efficiency, Kaizen, continuous improvements, because we did it every week, 
I became a better writer much faster compared to me trying to read a book or listen to an audiobook and understanding what storytelling is. Even though I kind of had the rough idea, by working with a coach, I was able, I was able to accelerate the success that I was looking for. And if you look at the best people in the world, even though they're really good at what they do already, they still have coaches. LeBron James, one of the best basketball players in the world. You know, we're not going to have the MJ LeBron discussion right now, but he's still getting coaching, right? His head coach, dribbling coach, shooting coach. He has all these coaches around him to help him improve his game. Same thing with billionaires. They work with sports psychologists. They have business coaches. They have fitness coaches as well. Even though they're extremely successful at what they do, they have other people around them to help make sure that they see their blind spots. Because one of the things I'm a big believer of is this phrase of you cannot read the ingredients label when you're inside the jar. <laughs> Meaning we cannot see our blind spots. We have to have someone else observe us and go, hey, Tan, I noticed you're doing this. That might be a blind spot. You not be, you might not be aware of it, but this is what's happening. And now I'm, it brings it to my awareness and I go, oh, wow, this is not good. Like, I need to change this or adjust this. And that can only be done when we have a coach showing us, observing us, and giving us feedback. Just like if I never had that copywriting coach, I could have written the newsletter in different ways and continued to write in the pattern that I know that's in my head. It's like, it's, like a, it's like a buggy software in a way because I'd know like, oh, this is how I write and this is what my voice is. But because I was working with the coach, the coach helped me update the software in my head of here's how you write a good story. Here's how you create engagement. Here's how you pull a reader in. Here's how you write a good headline or a good title. And she helped me update the software by working with her over time. And so when you're thinking about speeding up your skill development, speeding up building your network, having a quote unquote mentor, which oftentimes is a coach in this case, is one of the best ways you can invest in yourself. Yeah, I like what you said about the speeding up your success because there's different ways of getting where you want to go. You know, we're talking about productivity and productivity coaching, but you gave some great examples of athletics. An example that comes to mind is let's say you want to learn a language. Let's say you want to learn Spanish or something. You know, you can take a book out, How to Learn Spanish. You can go through the book. Maybe there's podcasts or audiobooks that you could listen to to learn Spanish. So that's one way. It's probably going to take quite a while. There's also apps, you know, you can get Duolingo or Babbel or whatever the different language apps are. I think that will be good too. You can learn it that way as well. But let's face it, the fastest way to learn a language is to have a person working with you, guiding you through it. And that is going to just get you there so much faster. And get you farther as well, an actual person having this conversation. And it's the same with, it's the same with any type of coaching, like that's language, but it's applicable to anything, right? A coach, like you said, is going to help you get outside of yourself. That's one. It's going to help you with setting and prioritizing goals. Knowing what to focus on is something so many of us struggle with. There's all these options of what we could do. And sometimes having a person outside of us can help us get there. Accountability, of course, like you said, with a workout, <laughs> that's huge for working out, but it's true for productivity as well. Also, the advice is tailored to you. It's not just some general article you read in a magazine or something like that. It's specifically tailored to you. And some of, sometimes some of us benefit a lot from just encouragement and motivation. You know, we talk about accountability that is somebody like holding your feet to the fire, but sometimes it's the other side. It's something, having somebody to celebrate wins with us and just motivate us and go forward. So these are all big benefits of coaching, but it's kind of funny, you know, we've been talking about all this coaching, but I know in the past 10, you've, you've done coaching, but you've always kind of been hesitant to make it part of AE's offering. You, whenever we talked about this in the past, you always said, you know, you preferred to help many people at a time instead of just one person, but we keep getting this feedback. Again, we just talked, we were just talking about this on our weekly meeting today that People say, you know, your courses are great, your communities are great, but I really need one-on-one -on -one help. So 
what do you think about that? What do you think one-on-one coaching can do in a productivity context, let's say, that, say, a course or a community maybe can't do for at least some people? Yeah, well, I'm excited to announce that we do offer coaching now. We just made it publicly available. So we have this new program called 25X Productivity Coaching, where you can start mastering productivity with one-on-one coaching from me personally as the founder of Asian Efficiency. And so we can walk you through like the 25X productivity system. So even if you attended our 25X online course, or even if you went to the in-person workshops that we do here in Austin, Texas, like you mentioned, there's something about having it personalized. There's something about having your specific needs met, having the coaching that you require to accelerate the success you're looking for. Because I could teach a room of five people in a, in a classroom setting and get everybody new skills, new developments, new habits put in place. But then sometimes when we leave the classroom, we leave ourselves through our own devices and we then we don't follow through because there's nobody holding us accountable. We now have to do it on our own to do that. And that's oftentimes where the drop off happens. And this is where a coach is really valuable, where I, as your coach, can hold you accountable and I will have regular check ins with you and go, hey, Last week, we talked about doing X, Y, and Z. Did you do this? If not, what do we have to do or adjust to make sure that this happens? So now, not only am I holding you accountable, but I'm also helping you with your weak spots. I'm seeing your blind spots. I'm coaching you through the process so you get the results that you're looking for. And and when I've worked with clients in the past in a one-on-one setting, it was always like, hey, I really want to do coaching with you, Tian. There's nothing else I want to do. And I would reluctantly go, okay, you know, I only want to work with people that I truly want to work with, so let's talk about it. And I would maybe end up working with three to five people in any given year. But now that we make it part of the offering here at what we do here at Asian Efficiency, I want to now open it up to everybody now who wants to get one-on-one coaching from us. So if you're interested in learning to master productivity, becoming more efficient, becoming more effective, then consider applying for a coaching program. You can go to 25xcoaching.com. So that is 25xcoaching.com and fill out the application form. It will ask you for your name, your phone number, your email, some of the challenges that you're going through right now. And then after you filled out the form, I will personally review it and then also set up a quick phone call with you so we can talk about it more in person and then see if I'm a good fit to help you because I wanna make sure that when we work together that I truly believe that I can help you because I understand your personal circumstances, what you're trying to accomplish and make sure that it's realistic because I don't wanna work with somebody that I cannot help, right? That, that is like the worst situation to be in because then both parties feel disappointed. So I'm super excited that we're now offering this coaching program. So if you wanna master the 25X productivity system, if you wanna have better mindsets, better skills, master your time, master your energy and master your attention, this is the coaching program for you. So go to 25xcoaching.com, fill out the application, and I'm super excited to hear from you. And as we're ending this podcast episode, as always, we like to say, what's one thing you can do today to invest in yourself? What is something that you took out from today's episode where you go, aha, this is so important. This is so key for me to advance in my career. Do that one thing whether it's learning a new skill, whether it's building or investing in your network, whether it's getting coaching, whether it's from us or from someone else, do that one thing right now. I cannot stress this enough. The sooner you start taking action on this, the more valuable it will become as time goes by. And remember, it doesn't have to cost money, but it will likely cost time. So invest wisely. So if you want to find more to everything that we talked about today, you can find them in the show notes by going to theproductivityshow.com. Thanks again for listening, and we'll see you next time. 